amazing. I never seen anything like it, Mr. President. Here we go, Mr. President. Mr. President. Sophie is ready for your haircut, sir. Well, you tell her unless she's planning for my assassination, it's not a good time right now. <laughs> Why don't we wait until we're on the ground? We can always get that together before the uh, photo ops. I'll let her know, Mr. President. Besides, I kind of like it a little long. Reminds me of my blue collar days. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Green, yeah. can you ask the pilots if they can take us above this, please? I'll go speak with the crew. Are you okay, sir? Yeah, I uh, got a little headache. I have some ibuprofen, sir. Good idea. Green, what's going on up there? Get the pilot to level the plane. I think it's about time we get up front and get strapped in, Mr. President. Thank you. We are flying over the Bermuda Triangle, after all. What's going on? Yes, sir. Hopefully this won't take too long. Morning, Sergeant Oliver. Soldiers? Good to see you again, sir. We have a situation. Will you and your second accompany me to the bridge? Of course, sir. You guys hang loose until I find out what's going on. process of locating that signal as we speak. Captain Oliver and team reported for duty, Admiral. At ease. Chairman Leary, Chief Oliver is present as you requested. Good morning, Chief Oliver. Good morning, Chairman. I know you've been gone on a long rotation, and you and your men are certainly in need of a break. But we have a situation of the utmost urgency. We need your assistance. Yes, sir. Whatever you need, sir. The President of the United States was jettisoned 
from Air Force One in his escape pod at 0517 hours this morning. You and your team will coordinate with Admiral Hansen and CPO Vincent. You will rescue the President. I'll call Hurlburt personally and inform them of your new orders. Yes, sir. Bring the President back alive, son. Yes, sir. Nice to be working with you again, Admiral. Chief Oliver, you were asked to run this operation by the JCS, not by me. So please take note, this is still my operation. I know that you are a risk taker, and risk taking often ends up with an unnecessary loss of life, as you and I both know. There will be no risk taking on this mission without my orders. This is the President of the United States. You will follow my orders to the letter. Failure to do so will result in your immediate court-martial. Do we understand each other? Yes, Admiral. Captain Phillips, have Dr. Zimmer and Lieutenant Plummer meet us on deck immediately. Yes, Admiral. Chief Oliver, assemble your team and meet us on the deck as well. Yes, Admiral Hayes. Dismissed. Your team still prepped and ready to go? Yes, Admiral. Very good. Hey, Revis. What's up? What is it? No clue. Boy, she still has it in for you, huh? Yeah, well, the feeling's mutual. I'm just glad we got the call. You'll be fine. Hey, it's only the president. <laughs> Careful, Doctor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell are those? It's Reftia Patchpatia, but of course a very extravagant embodiment. Non-scientific name, please, Doctor. Tube worms, Admiral. But they seem to possess some sort of bioelectrogenesis, which is contrary to any of the species in its respective phylum. They would appear to be surveying us at the moment. Tell me about it. Do they seem hostile? I don't know, they're worms. But they do seem angry. All teams lock and load! Chief, you seeing this? Affirmative, Rebus. Lock and load and get the team port side. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. a move, I blast its ugly ass to hell. Go, 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 go
artillery or SAMs have any effect on me. Suggestions. Zimmer. Captain Phillips, commence damage control. Weapon systems are our first priority. I want to keep some aircraft up there. Get the tankers airborne to refuel and recall the rest. Dr. Zimmer, I want a complete assessment of what those things were. Attention on deck. At ease. Chief Oliver, you still have a job to do. CPO Vincent. We've established an approximate location of the President's pod at 7,000 meters deep. Now that's well beyond the maximum crush capacity. Okay, the structural of the hull seems to be fully intact, but there may be a compromise in the oxygen recycler. We estimate that there may be as little as four hours of oxygen remaining. Now, it's going to take you three hours to safely descend to that depth in the diving bell. Upon your arrival, you'll deploy with the fluorocarbon liquid ventilators. You don't have much time, gentlemen. So if you're not up to task, I expect you to be forthcoming now. We can handle it. Admiral Hansen? Yes, Lieutenant Plummer. Perhaps we should use the Prometheus DSRV-2 prototype. Forgive me. This is Lieutenant Plummer from the Office of Naval Research. She's an expert on physical oceanography and marine electronics engineering. She will also be your mission advisor. Can you tell us a little more about the Prometheus, Lieutenant? It's a prototype deep sea piloted submersible that was set to be free and cleared for duty this month. Now, it would take a quarter of that time to reach that depth. And given these circumstances, we should consider it but it also is not equipped with any type of armament. CPO Vincent, when are the subsurface assault vessels scheduled to arrive? Within the hour, and then an extra 30 minutes to prep and deploy, Admiral. All right, let's do it. Lieutenant Plummer, tell the Prometheus crew to run prep and diagnostics immediately. Yes, Admiral. Chief Oliver, when the SSAVs arrive to provide escort, you will launch. With all due respect, Admiral, I don't think we have time for that. We don't know when these things are going to strike again. Duly noted, and I appreciate your concern. But without a security escort, the mission is jeopardized, and more importantly, so is the President's life. We will wait. We'll be standing by awaiting your orders, Admiral Hansen. Very well. Dismissed. CPO Vincent, Dr. Zimmer, come with me. I want to know what the hell it was that attacked my fleet. All right, gear up. 
You've got a job to do. Three hours. This is ridiculous. We gotta wait for Vincent's equipment. I almost got a point, though. If those things attack us down there. We're screwed. It is highly maneuverable. Okay, yeah. huh? Idiots! Soldiers! I'm Lieutenant Commander Drew Barclay. I'll be piloting the Prometheus. You may stow your gear on board now. Thank you, sir. All right, you heard him. Grab your gear and load up. Flight helicopters, fixed wing. Pick one, kill it, and move on to the next. Right. All right, that's it. Everybody listen up. I'm through screwing around down here. I'm taking that sub out right now. We will not be able to defend ourselves down there. Vincent will never get his equipment aboard of those things attacking us, and we're just gonna lose more time. You wanna come? I appreciate the company. If not, that's fine too. Just to be clear, Admiral Hansen will probably have me court-martialed for going against her orders. Which means she'll probably court-martial everybody else who comes along. The hell with him. I'm with you, Chief. I'm ready to rock. Y'all know how I feel about it. I'm in. Let's do this. What are we waiting for? Booyah! 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 Sergeant Oliver. Yes, Lieutenant. Are you sure this is the right thing to do? Ma'am, our job is to save lives, regardless of the consequences or what may or may not be the protocol. Now that is the President of the United States of America at the bottom of that ocean. So if it means saving his life, I'm willing to suffer the consequences. He is preparing for lunch. All right, Rebus, get the coordinates. Got it. Elfman, we got sonar? Ready to roll. All right, Captain Williams. Yeah, I'll set, Chief. All right, let's do this, guys. You don't have to do this. Listen up, team. There are a lot of underwater currents, as well as other variables that can affect this ship systems. You're gonna need me for this. Plus, there's no telling what we might find down there, right? Welcome aboard, Lieutenant. Commander, Lieutenant. Still waiting for our orders. Did you see that? Yes, ma'am. They seem to be communicating. When one gets injured, it retreats to the rear, and the others continue with the attack. It's very sophisticated. CPO Vincent, what is the sit rep on getting those SSABs aboard? Copy that, Admiral. They're coming in now. We need heavy ordnance port side midship now. Uh, I repeat, heavy ordnance port side midship. Order? 
Rangers. Let's go. just lost the Super Stallion. With the SSAVs. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir! The Prometheus is launching! Prometheus launch, come in. This is Prometheus launch, go ahead. What are you doing? Why is that sub launching? Lieutenant Commander Barclay ordered it, sir. Bridge, bridge. The Prometheus is launching. Admiral Hansen, the officer of the deck says that the Prometheus is launched. Raise them. Yes, Admiral. Prometheus. This is the USS Nemesis. I repeat, this is the USS Nemesis. Please respond. How do I respond? Don't respond. I've got to say something. Do not respond. DSRV2, please respond. I say again, Prometheus. Please respond. You're killing me, man. Chief Oliver, you will respond and comply by immediately returning the Prometheus. Wow, really? such a good working relationship, do you? No, ma'am, we do not. What's going on between you two, Chief? Because if I'm in the middle of it, I'd like to know what I've gotten myself into. <sighs> All right. Three years ago, she was stationed aboard the USS Harry Truman. We got a call to rescue one of her Tomcats that had gone down over Afghanistan. The intel was her intel was shaky. We were almost to the coordinates that we were last given, and Admiral Hansen decided to pull from the mission. We were so close that I instructed my team to go on. We lost radio contact, and the LZ turned out to be a trap. We took some casualties, one of which was my best friend. And there was a downed Tomcat. Not more than two clicks away from us. If Admiral Hansen would have had her act together, then maybe the pilot, my team, and my best friend would still be alive. I'm sorry. Yeah. The loss of life is truly regrettable. But, uh... But what? She did call the mission. You continued on. Had you taken orders, your friend and teammates might still be alive. You don't understand, but we do. Sir! We got something coming in starboard side, and it's big. Ooh, it's coming in fast. I'm clocking it at 30 knots. All right, full throttle ahead. All right, full throttle. Barclay's down! Trip, get up here! 
Like it's moving. Give it a few seconds. If we power up now, we're liable to attract more of those things. And we've got less than three hours to find this pod. The Gulf Stream runs through here. If Mr. Elfman will allow me, I can navigate us into it. Let's see. We we intermittently feather the power on and off. Let the current do the rest. It's coming around. Hey, 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 take it easy. What? Rivas, can you feed me the uh, pod encryption code? Yes, ma'am. All right, guys. I've honed in on the pod's location and programmed the sub to take us there. We'll use the Gulf Stream to get us there. Margin of error, less than 1%. How'd you do that, Lieutenant? Well, it's simply a matter of modulating the frequencies to compensate for the changes in the ocean as we descend. Temperature, salinity, half a dozen other variables. But right now, I suggest you guys hold on to something tight because we are in for it. It's about to get ugly. of this quantity is highly unlikely. They span 30 meters above the surface of the water. That's just the tentacles. They seem to be part of a much larger central nervous system of another sea-bearing creature. If this is the case, the tentacles could be as, as long as 7,000 meters. Piece of the specimen. I will be in my lab. Now watch this. You're telling me that these are appendages that are attached to something bigger. How does this experiment tell you that? Elementary neurology, I hope. You see where we inserted the catheters into the specimen? 
These pathways are not dissimilar to nerves. This deeper network of innervated wiring is congruous with the peripheral nerves of living organisms as we know it here on Earth. Now, in order to initiate the electrical impulse I just demonstrated, it must originate from a central command center or a central nervous system, if you will. This organism, in of itself, it is not capable of producing the electrical discharge that we witnessed during those attacks. What did you mean by here on Earth? This is clearly a non-terrestrial organism, Adderall. Look at it. But earlier, you called it a reptia, a... Reptia patchpatia. Yes, you called it a tube worm. Uh, until I dissected it, yes, it did display some reptia patchpatia. DNA, but this is much more complex. I mean, it it is assimilated into a biomechanical organism from elsewhere other than our world. I mean, the components that make up this energy pathways are anything other in this world. And you think that these are attached to something bigger below the surface? I assure you that my hypothesis is not mere conjecture, Admiral. <sighs> Captain Phillips? Um. I want to run deep subsurface detection for massive organic life. Yes, sir. Good work, Dr. Zimmer. Hey, sir. The water. It's going shallow. I'm reading depths of seven fathoms, sir. Wait, what? Seven fathoms. That can't be. Did you run diagnostics on your equipment? Yes, ma'am. Everything's completely intact. Sir, the satellites are reading that we're approximately seven fathoms off the same plane as the pod's encryption. Now, that can't be. Something must have broken during the attack. We could be in an underwater cavern, which explains why the system is reading us at seven fathoms. It's reading off of a false bottom. That's right. Low ballast! Low ballast! Instruments are reading there's oxygen. And pressure reads 1.03 atmospheres. That's impossible. That's normal AAP. We're over 7,000 meters below sea level. <laughs> Look for yourself. That would not make any sense unless it's being controlled somehow. USS Nemesis, this is the Prometheus. DSRV2, come in, Nemesis. Chief Oliver, what is your location? We've landed in what appears to be an underwater cavern, Admiral. Our depth, however, is unknown. But the encryption appears to be within our perimeter, approximately two clicks from our present location. Very well. Lieutenant Plummer is with you? Yes, ma'am. Chief Oliver, you have a mission to do, so do it. But keep me apprised, do you understand? Yes, Admiral. Nemesis out. Damn, that was weird. I could have sworn the Admiral was gonna chew you in the well, She has too much to deal with up there. Now look, we have less than an hour to find that pod before the oxygen supply runs out. And the president dies. He's not already dead. Dad, you okay?
I've got it. We're approximately two kilometers dead ahead. You hear that? Yeah. Elfman, pipe in what's going on out there. Copy that. What in the hell is that? living tissue it's definitely something constructed but not man-made it's non-terrestrial she's right something is definitely controlling the atmospheric pressure oh my god it's like an airplane graveyard I guess we're not the first ones down here Think anyone's alive down here? Let's hope so. Hey guys, I think that light up there is the president's pod. It's possible. It could be some form of bioluminescence. This could be an alien outpost. That's right where we gotta go. All right, let's keep our eyes peeled for a place to dock. This is absolutely amazing. This is the first real contact with non-terrestrial life. As far as we know it. I'm sorry we don't have more time to explore this. We have a job to do. I know. But we've got 45 minutes. Rebus, is there any change in that signal? No, Chief's still dead ahead. Team, suit up in your bio gear. We don't know what sort of organisms are in this environment. Commander Barclay, probably best to remain here with the sub. I'll be fine, Chief. Go do what you need to do. All right. We'll be back. I don't believe it. 
That's the USS Cyclops. It has to be. What's the USS Cyclops? It was a cargo ship carrying coal. It vanished without a trace with the entire crew of 306 after March 4th, 1918, in the Bermuda Triangle. You sure about that? I'm positive. I studied old photographs of it a, a hundred times. Then I guess this has been going on for a hell of a long time then. I got the president's signal. We're triangulating right now. All right, everyone. We gotta spread out. We've got 29 minutes until the oxygen runs out in that escape pod. Keep constant radio contact to stay frosty. We don't know what kind of life is down here. Hondo Elfman, let's take the left flank. Right behind you. Phillips, I need you to find out where that Ohio-class nuke is. Yes, Admiral. USS Maine. This is USS Nemesis. What's your ETA? This is the USS Maine. We are approximately 105 nautical miles from your location. ETA 80, zero minutes.
found the president's pod. 30 feet from your position. Good work, Preach! You guys, we got company. Whatever you gotta do, you gotta do it quick. We're working on it. He's got a pulse. The president's alive. I need reserve oxygen. Get that mask on him immediately. Are we clear? The city's lit up. Come on. Where, where am I? Thank God. Let's get out of here. Are you okay to walk? Yeah, I'm fine. Follow me! I'm fine. What in God's name is this place? We believe it's a city, Mr. President. What we've seen suggests it was built by an alien civilization. What information do you have to, to say that there are aliens associated with this? Obviously. This would explain the legendary magnetic forces of the Bermuda Triangle, sir. All right, we've got to get going, sir. We've got a rescue submersible waiting. Follow me. Chief, do you think we should call in a strike force? I wouldn't do that. We don't know enough about this thing, sir. If this has anything to do with those tentacles up top, I say we blow them to hell. Tentacles?
Where's Preacher? It's too late for Preacher. Begin preparations for getting underway. Copy that. All stations are ready to get underway. Rig for dive. Copy that. Rigging for dive. Damn it, power's out. Chief, hit the auxiliary pump with the stern ballast. Stern ballast engaged. Main ballast. Main ballast engaged. Auxiliary pump is down. Hey, man, talk to me. I need you to stay on the pumps. Had to get back here. Copy that, Commander. I know how to handle the wires. Come on, you guys are right on us. Blue wires. You got that. All engines in reverse. Full speed. Copy that. Hit me. Hitting you. Come on, you guys, let's go. Hit me again. Hitting you again. Let's pass into the windows. Let's go. Two, one. Hit. Oh, oh. All right, come on, let's go. Let's go. Work, Commander. Thank you, you too. Lieutenant Commander, I don't think we've met yet. Lieutenant Commander Drew Barclay, Mr. President. I want to thank you for your service. Yes, sir. My pleasure, sir. And you, you and your team, for your sacrifice. I know what it's like to lose men under my command. Thank you, sir. But we're not out of the woods yet, sir. All right. Coming, guys. Hard right weather! Come on! Hydraulics are full! What's happening? Is that, that that thing that was chasing us outside? No, Mr. President, it's the Gulf Stream. That's what got us here. Hang on tight, sir. Source of energy 
finish this. It's silver sink batteries, right? Silver sink batteries. We bypassed the regular and overload protection device. We couldn't affect the liver. A surge to the primary thrusters, right? And it would give us a boost to get home, right? The problem would be how long we would last. And if it would get us to the surface. Because the override could short out the electric batteries. And that would leave us dead in the water. <laughs> yes, sir. Chief, any thoughts? I've always been one for risk, sir. I say we go for it. I'm with Chief Oliver, Mr. President. I say we do it. Yeah, Barkley? Yes, sir. Let's go. Keep it steady. We'll do. Well, my pass regulator. I'll be back, Commander. My passing regulator. She's ready. You realize the battery overload could explode. We know that. Let's engage! Yes, sir! It's almost at us! All right, I think we gotta stay in our seats for this. Lieutenant? Yes? Can you just let me know when the battery's fully charged? Yes, sir, we are at 70%. It's coming for us. 80%, 90! 90%! 90%. 90 3, 2, 1! Now at 100%! All right, now! Let's go! Let's go. On board. Great. Go meet him. Get a chopper ready for the president's immediate evacuation and get Lieutenant Plummer and Chief Oliver down here immediately. Aye, aye, Admiral. We need a medic down here! Mr. President, uh, welcome yeah. aboard, sir. Captain. Can you fill me in on what's going on up here? You follow me? Thank you. Watch your head. We're preparing for your immediate evacuation, and I'll fill you in. I want you to bring me to the bridge first. The bridge is gone, sir. We've suffered some serious damage, and I have orders to evacuate you immediately. Well, you've got new orders, Captain. Take me up to the Admiral. Yes, Mr. President. President, so glad you're all right, sir. We have a helo ready for your immediate evacuation. I've got to ask you, do you have any strategic submarines in your fleet? We're awaiting the arrival of an Ohio-class SSBN. But, sir, we need to get you off this I'm ship. I'm not going anywhere. Now, Lieutenant Plummer and Chief Oliver, I want you to tell the Admiral what it was that we encountered down there. And I need to contact Washington immediately. Sir, it is of the utmost importance that we get you off this ship now. I said while I'm we can. not going anywhere. You're familiar with my record as a Marine in combat. Of course. All right. But your safety. And we, we both took the same oath, Admiral. We both swore we would defend the Constitution of the United States against enemies both foreign and domestic. I took that oath and a few others. Yes, sir. Now, we are in contact with an alien civilization for the first time in history, and we're being attacked. It's my duty to handle that attack. Mr. President, White House. Thank you. Yes, this is the President. Yes. I warned you about taking risks. This time you got lucky. Yes, Admiral. Admiral Hansen, we discovered these two worms are connected to something much larger. Yes, Dr. Zimmer arrived at the same conclusion. What else did you learn? There's a city at its core and a massive graveyard with ships and aircrafts. They are being drawn into huge lightning panels that seem to be powering the city. Most likely the tentacles as well. Now, there must be a limit to how much energy this creature can expel before it needs to power down and regenerate. That would corroborate with the behavior that our other specimen manifested. So we should direct an attack while it's in this recovery mode. I believe so. Yes. You have a plan? Yes, sir. We will coordinate our subsurf search with the USS Maine, and we will attack the creatures while they appear to be in recovery mode. All right, good. 
Do you have any theories? We don't have much to go on right now, Admiral, but we do know that they've been here for quite some time. Those energy panels were erected to fuel the city and sustain life by gathering machines powered by nuclear energy or fossil fuels. And they're clearly hostile, so I believe we're doing the right thing. Take the fight to it while it's still vulnerable. What the hell was that? Admiral! I believe my hypothesis is accurate. Just be attacked. Do it now! All ships. All ships. Authorized to engage. Authorized to engage. President, I am not sure that we have any other options. How long before that thing hits the coast? Approximately 55 minutes, sir. I'm authorizing the use of nuclear weapons. Contact the USS Maine immediately. You do realize, Mr. President, that the use of nuclear weapons this close to the shoreline will likely result in a nuclear please, fallout. Please, doctor. People will die, including us. A huge portion of the land will become uninhabitable for years to come. I'm well aware of that, doctor. I'm also aware that there's over seven billion people on this planet. This alien race has declared unprovoked war on us, and in war, there's always going to be casualties. My job is to minimize that loss of life. So if a small percentage relative to the entire world's population must perish, then those are the unfortunate consequences. I want a 50 mile radius no fly zone declared. This is ground zero. Yes, Mr. President. USS Nemesis to USS Maine. Do you copy? We copy. Over. Arm the nuclear weapons. Roger that. Nuclear weapons are hot. It's just preparing to attack. Genesis. The USS Genesis is gone. Where'd it go? Did we hurt him? 
Enten. Current velocity and course put it at Cape Hatteras in approximately 40 minutes. We can't do a nuclear strike over the continent. It is one thing to do it out to sea, but over the continent... We don't have any choice, Doctor. People will die. Millions. Mr. President. Soldier. What about a strike to the center core of the spaceship? Point blank. What are you proposing, Chief? Those lightning panels we saw down in the city. That's what's manufacturing the power for this thing, right? Yes, Chief. So if we hit it at its source, couldn't we produce some sort of implosion? Yes, it's very possible. We can't just fire a missile into the core of that thing and hope to hit the city that you're talking about. Not from a sub, no. Well, if not from a sub, then how? We rig a conventional warhead to a portable launcher. Captain Warren flies me in, and I deliver the strike point blank. Well, your best option, Mr. President. It could work. Right. Well, what do you think? I'm not sure, Mr. President. Possibly it could be done. What concerns me is the amount of time it would take to orchestrate it. The ship would be that much further inland. Soldiers, you men know what you're doing, don't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You've got 15 minutes. Got it? Sir, yes, yes sir. sir. Move fast. conventional warhead but no one's ever fired anything like it before so i wish i could tell you more about trajectory the truth is i don't know good luck chief thanks connie you know i could fly this bird in on my own captain i lost a lot of my team today and there's no reason to add you to the casualty list we a lot of missions together chief this one's no different yes sir Give me a direct line to Chief Oliver. Let's get a direct line to Airhawk One. Copy that. Go, sir. Chief Oliver. Yes, Mr. President. We only get one shot, you know that. Yes, Mr. President. Don't worry. One shot is all I need, sir. I'm grateful for your service, son. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Chief. Let's do it! Foxtrot Romeo 133, ready for takeoff. Airhawk 1, you're clear for takeoff? Go get him, boys. Copy that. You were inside that thing? Yeah! You really think this is gonna work? Hell yes! Good enough for me. Dr. Zimmer, how long did it take that tentacle to regenerate in your experiment? Two minutes.
The spacecraft is still online with Cape Hatteras. It's approximately 15 minutes out, and the USS Maine is less than 10 minutes away. Airhawk 1, the USS Maine is 10 minutes out. What's your status? We will engage in the next six minutes and 30 seconds, Admiral. Admiral Hansen. Yes, Lieutenant. The spacecraft takes exactly two minutes to regenerate between attacks, the same as Dr. Zimmer's experiment with his specimen. Airhawk 1. The alien spacecraft is attacking at exactly two minute intervals. You must wait until after the next attack. You won't make it to the core with the time that you have left. The thing is going to attack Hatteras next. We don't have time to wait. That's a negative, Admiral. We're out of time. Cape Hatteras is the next probable target. We need to take the shot. No offense, Admiral. But we can't wait. If he doesn't get this done, we have to launch the nukes. Airhawk 1, you will cease engagement immediately. You must wait. If we abort, 20,000 people will be killed. You don't have time. The greater population density takes precedence. If you fail, the aircraft will go and attack Tampa or Miami, and then we will be forced to fire nuclear weapons over a greater population. Cape Hatteras is a necessary sacrifice. He's going in. Chief Oliver, you will stand down. I repeat, you will stand down. Do you hear? We have four minutes, 45 seconds left. Foxtrot Romeo 133, we are entering enemy airspace. Listen, you and I don't like each other, and we probably never will. I understand that you blame me for the death of your best friend based on orders that I gave you three years ago. But at this moment, you will listen, and you will obey my orders. You are to stand down until after the next attack, and then you are clear to engage. Do you hear me? If we wait! We may not even survive to attack this thing. Look, look. If you go in now, maybe you save 20,000 lives. But if you go in and you fail, and if you are killed, then millions, and I tell you, millions of people will die, and that is because you have left us with no choice. Sometimes you must accept a moderate casualty rate in order to prevent a larger one. That is the way it is. You cannot save everyone. Chief Oliver. Chief Oliver, do you copy? All right! Cape Hatteras has been destroyed. It's, it's gone. Oh my god, 20,000 people. Chief Petty Officer, you get in there and you destroy the hell out of that ship. Copy that, Admiral! Let's do this, Captain! Keep him apprised of how much time he has left. Yes, Admiral. Chief Oliver, 
This is Lieutenant Plummer. Copy, Lieutenant! I'll keep you up on your time. You have exactly one minute, 45 seconds left. Copy that, Lieutenant! Foxtrot Romeo 133, we are entering the fissure. Exactly one minute and ten seconds. Copy that, Lieutenant! They won't have enough time to get out of there. They'll do it. One minute left, Chief. Copy that, Lieutenant! I'm glad it was you. Give me the countdown. Me too. It should be a great time to use that thing! Hold on a second! We don't have a second! Assess me. Yes. Um, <clears throat> USS Maine. This is the USS Nemesis. What happened? What was that?
Romeo, 133 to USS Nemesis. Requesting permission to land? We're coming home. Thank you, sir.